Today, we're looking at the side project, and I'm going to share with you the ones that I think will help you develop your knowledge and skills in your first role in cybersecurity, give you plenty to talk about in your interview, and break up the monotony of just doing CTFs and certs, which, let's face it, it's something that everyone else is doing, so it doesn't exactly set you apart. Just do what every cybersecurity vendor does and add AI to the title of your project. That's true, the whole world has gone mad for AI and you can easily integrate it with just a few API calls. At the end of the video, I've got a brain dump of extra ideas for you to try if you don't fancy any of the ones that I put forward during the video. And of course, don't forget, it's your project, your time, so of course, your choice. Choose something you find interesting over something optimal. If you tried one of these projects already, then let us know how it went in the comments below. And of course, if you have an idea for a project but I've not covered it, then feel free to share that too. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Let's start with projects for those that want to enter the world of network penetration testing. An old colleague of mine actually gave me this idea as it was something that he built to save a ton of time during a pen test that he was working on. So our first project is this, a tool that scans for open SMB shares, connects to them, and then checks the files and scripts inside for hard-coded credentials. This is useful because when you're doing a pen test inside of a large network, you won't have time to check every share manually, and it demonstrates a bunch of different scripting skills, especially when it comes to having to understand how to handle connections, errors, files, and regex. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can easily implement things like throttling, file size checks, limits on how many directories the tool will go to, limiting the types of files that it checks, logging, you can really go to town with this and it's something that will be useful again and again. And obviously it will give you a ton to talk about during your interview. My second project would be a C2 server that you can use to assist during your pen tests. You can work on hardening it, making sure that it has robust authentication authorization, and have it host files or catch reverse shells for you. This is extra useful once you've stepped outside of the world of CTFs and you don't have a VPN to everything that you need to access. And finally, if you feel like you're not quite ready to take on a project yourself, maybe check out Joe's Learn by Doing Command and Control with Python ebook. This is a great place to start as you can build on this project as your skills grow. And once again, giving you a useful tool that you can use and also a lot to talk about during your interview. As a hiring manager, if I saw a candidate with any of these projects, I would think, awesome, this person can add value to the team in the long run and not just figure out things day to day. It's going to really set you apart and help you develop your skills. Next up, we have projects for AppSec, and there are quite a few projects that come to mind here. If you're more interested in offensive web app pen testing, then creating things like Burp Suite or browser extensions, or building web shells in specific languages for specific targets are a good place to start. For extensions, you can look at what makes your workflow easier and more efficient, or expand on existing extensions to make them more flexible or useful in different scenarios. If you've been working with a particular CMS like WordPress, maybe consider writing a plugin that checks for weaknesses or a scanner that, once you've made your way into the admin panel, checks for common ways to upload files or achieve remote code execution. For those that are interested in AppSec engineering or maybe parts of an internal security team, I'd recommend setting up a vulnerable application and testing different open source scanners against that application. You can compare the results and then add security controls to the target to see how well the scanners deal with the increasingly hardened targets. Writing about your methodology and findings here is a great way to contribute some information to the community, and it shows that when you are hired, you can instantly bring some value to an AppSec team because you have some experience evaluating tools and defenses. It also gives you a ton of insights into different security controls, their effectiveness, the efforts in configuring and maintaining those tools, and generally a lot to talk about during your interview. Aside from this, building some small web apps or CTFs using a modern technology stack I think would help tremendously. A lot of security practitioners can build small PHP apps that are vulnerable to SQL injection or file upload, but honestly, 
things have moved on and we need to stay up to date. Maybe take a look at more interesting attacks like prototype pollution and race conditions, or look at JWTs over a cookie that's just a password in Base64, or maybe how to abuse an ORM that's preventing you from achieving your injection attack. And finally, get a grasp of modern architecture and front-end frameworks. This will really put you ahead of a lot of others in the field. So last but not least, let's take a look at governance, risk, and compliance projects, and a few of these come to mind. First up, we have creating an open source GRC dashboard, and this is an interesting one because you can be quite flexible and dive into utilizing tools like Kibana, or you can keep it really simple and use Excel. The amount of complexity is 100% up to you, and when you come to evaluate or configure tools later on, you'll have a really clear idea of what's a must-have and what's a nice-to-have. You could also apply the same dashboard idea to tracking regulation changes, and if you want to expand on it, having it export reports on demand or even automatically based on a schedule would be a nice extension as well. The other project that I might take on is creating some flexible GRC playbooks covering what to do during things like a data breach or how to onboard a third party vendor. By creating these, you're going to really solidify your knowledge and that's going to set you up for success when you need to apply for a role. So you might be wondering, or maybe not wondering at all, what I worked on during the early stages of my career. And I recall putting a reasonable amount of effort into a bunch of scripts that can be used with a F5 web application firewall to layer on security controls that the application had missed out. Things like brute force protection, injecting missing headers, virtual patching, etc. I wrote quite a few of these scripts and also spent a fair bit of time optimizing them and learned a lot during the process. Nowadays, all of my projects are based around web application security and developments. I've been working on a living wiki that promotes ideas and techniques over specific payloads, and I'm building a lot of CTFs. For me, I learn a lot about vulnerabilities when trying to replicate them, and this gives me a good insight into their behavioral quirks and how they can be prevented. And finally, if you didn't find anything you want to take on so far, here are some other projects to consider. If you have a favorite or have used one of these before, then let us know in the comments below how you got on. Otherwise, feel free to use this list to spark ideas. First up, we have write a script that learns a user's typing habits and then creates an alert when someone else is typing at the computer. Or maybe a script that takes output from your tools and automatically generates a report so that you can easily review and modify. A tool that looks for IoT devices on the network and then automatically checks for default credentials, basically the same as the Mirai botnet, or create some Metasploit modules for known exploits or unstable POCs that don't already have modules created for them. You could build a script that monitors for changes in target web applications, or a payload generator and bonus points for being able to pass in characters that are known to be filtered to whittle down the results to list only ones that are useful, or maybe an updated version of Foxy Proxy where you can set the scope inside the plugin itself to route traffic based on that scope rather than inside your proxy. Your side project doesn't have to be entirely novel. You can work on things that you find interesting or expand on things that already exist. So that's it for this video. I hope this gave you some ideas on how to get started with your next side project. Don't forget to make it easily accessible so that you can share it during your interview. And personally, I'd prioritize picking something that I was interested in over anything else. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions, then feel free to swing by our Tuesday live streams. Catch you next time.